It is five o'clock. I will call this meeting to order. Uh, Pastor Weston Wildenauer of Good Shepherd Lutheran Chapel is going to give our invocation time. Thank you, Weston. Appreciate it. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your many gifts, your blessings that you have given to us, uh, the ability to be here and, and to, to serve the people of Cape Girardeau. And we ask that you continue to put your uh, helping hand upon our, our nation, upon our, our state, upon our city, uh, the, that we may know your goodness, may know your love, even in the midst of difficulties and trials, uh, that, that you are there. Um, be with uh, the men and women who are here tonight, uh, that they may look to you for guidance, uh, and that our, our city uh, and, and the people that are around uh, may know uh, that, that they care and, and that love uh, is, is what you are driving them to do. Lord, we pray that you are with us in all that we do. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I want to remind everybody... Uh, with mask on, sometimes it's hard to hear, especially when we're broadcast on YouTube. And I would remind you to, when you talk, please try to get that mic up next to you so you can hear. And and sometimes with the mask on, you're if you're not talking loud enough, it's hard to hear what you're saying. That's been kind of a uh, an ongoing issue with with the mask, but that's the way it is. We just have to deal with it. Uh, Dan Preston's with us tonight on Zoom. Congratulations, Daddy. He's a new father. You're welcome. How are uh, How are Jess and the little one doing? Good. She's doing really good. You know, uh, we're just trying to get used to uh, life with a uh, ten-day-old. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Good luck. Yeah. Sleep deprivation. Yes, sleep deprivation. Uh, we have no presentations this evening. Uh, we'll go right into communication and reports. Council, anybody? Don't everybody speak at once. Well, I didn't want to start from anything kind of... Um, I know that I've, I've been contacted over the weekend with some... Sorry. I've been contacted over the weekend by a, a few business owners downtown, Cape Jardo and... And I know there were a, an assault maybe and a couple of things going on. And it, and the business owners had just talked about they felt like uh, maybe in, in some areas along the Broadway corridor that, that some uh, things had spiked and, and there were some issues with some assaults and different things. I don't know. I, I wasn't able to pull the GIS or the information, but just kind of wanted to make mention that I had gotten a few calls or emails and, and messages, Facebook messages about that. And um, I'm not sure if, Chief, if you've heard anything or seen anything or uh, it just seems like there were two specific incidences and and uh, not to put you on the spot, but I know that they're, they're con they were concerned. And I don't, we haven't seen a spike in the assaults downtown. I know that the one instance where a woman was uh, Okay, and I don't and I don't like I said these are messages and I and I said well I haven't heard anything myself I said I would bring it up and ask Chief if he had heard anything and if uh, if if the numbers would relate to a spike as as it was being portrayed to me. Okay, thank you, Chief. I, I would just say I've also had some people reach out to me also, and it's not necessarily on the Broadway corridor, but some of the immediate streets intersecting with it and how the lighting that was a concern that i've heard repeatedly but then now because of the assault that they then reach out and said hey can we get this you know look more definitively looked at potentially just from a lighting issue to, for preventative measures so, some of the side street lights. yeah some of the side street right just off of broadway so gotta put my glasses on to read my notes 
happens when you get old and you write small. Uh, if there's nobody else, I uh, went to a meeting in Columbia, Missouri uh, last week for Missouri Mayors United. It is a group of Missouri mayors. Uh, there are over 330, I think, in this group. That uh, Some were there with Zoom, some were there in person. Uh, basically, we had kind of a legislative update on what's happened this year and uh, and and ongoing in 2021 uh, some of the big things of concern uh, are still Wayfair uh, Senate Bill 5 and 572 court reform uh, uh, getting mowed up more money for highways uh, and several other things that uh, we listed like nine different issues that we're going to work on this year with uh, with the legislators and uh, I think more and more mayors are getting vocally active and contacting legislators especially to deal with the nuisance issues and uh, it's just it's getting to the point that that uh, we've got no choice but to do something to change what's what's happened to our state and how we punish people uh, in order to to get some enforcement and uh, it's getting critical not just here but a lot of places uh, I, uh, I I wanted to tell uh, uh, everybody everybody's always wonders why uh, council goes in closed session and a lot of that deals with personnel and other issues but uh, we are beginning the process uh, since Scott made the announcement uh, earlier of his impending retirement next year uh, at the end of June or somewhere in there. Uh, we are beginning the process of a city manager search nationwide. Uh, it is a long process to go through and uh, we will be in closed session a number of times dealing with that with that issue. We are uh, we've already started uh, the process by uh, doing some similar things that were done back in 2008 when the city hired Scott uh, the number one thing is to go to your employees and ask what they want in a city manager. What qualities do they want? What what kind of person do they want? Uh, the second thing uh, would be collecting input just about our city itself, so that when we have this search and we and we let people know what what our city what's the condition of our city. What's the uh, just the, basically about Cape Girardeau. Uh, where are we financially? Where are we uh, structurally? Where are we uh, in other places? And we'll be gathering input with that. We're researching data from the, in, from the uh, ICMA, the International City County Management Association, to kind of help with that. But as we develop a profile and update that information uh, with our comp plan and everything else, uh, we'll discuss the process and evaluate whether we want to use an outside recruitment agency and not put that load on our staff. Uh, but it's, it's a process we have to go through and it may take a while to get it done. Uh, but it's beginning. So that's, uh, that's a big thing. And, and it's when you, uh, it's one of the most important, th uh, more important things I think a council will do. And that is select the the leader who's going to run your city and uh, we're very thankful the last nine years that Scott's done a great job but everybody has to retire sometime yep. right yep. Uh, I don't have anything else if anybody doesn't have anything Scott uh, just, uh, <clears throat> I have just a uh, one item really uh, the council at, during retreat we talked a little bit about uh, the process for selecting our uh, advisory board appointments and so staff has been working on that and i just wanted to let you all know that uh, next meeting uh, staff will be making a report and uh, giving you some options as far as uh, some of the things that we'd heard we heard um, you know, want to look at maybe the length uh, of the term limits maybe shorten that up a little bit to get a little more turnover um, uh, so that was one of the things we're looking at looking at then if we do that then we're going to need to also have more people so how do you how do we engage that 
and um, and any other ideas that you have, uh, let us know, and we'll uh, we'll have that discussion next time during our study session. And then, as a result of that, it may be uh, that we need to um, to to pass an ordinance because our uh, most of those boards are set by ordinance. Uh, so then, that would start the process of a couple of meetings where we would do an ordinance uh, to change that if we if we decide to change. So. Uh, just wanted to update you on that and let you know that's coming next uh, next meeting. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll go into planning and zoning. Bruce. Good evening, Council. We only had one agenda item, or sorry, one action item, and then three uh, subdivision plats that were recommended for approval. I don't know how those of us with glasses are going to make it through this. Um, but real briefly, so there was a request from JJP Investments to rezone a property at 1134 uh, North Sprague. This is right next to Rhodes. Uh, they're looking to do, they're rezoning it from an R4 to an R1 or C1. Sorry, requesting it to be rezoned from an R4 to a C1 for a drive through restaurant. Um, that passed unanimously uh, for recommendation for your consideration. And then there were three subdivision plats, the Ratliff Acres plat, uh, the Ratliff Care Center. Uh, they're combining uh, multiple lots as well as a vacant street uh, into um, one plat. The St. Jude Second Subdivision, this is off of Silver Springs, um, right behind the Silver Springs Surgery Center. They're combining it or dividing it from one lot into two. And then the third subdivision plat, um, was Court 1 subdivision. This is the old Kmart property uh, where they're dividing or taking it from three lots into two. Um, again, all three of those passed with uh, unanimous support of the commission. Okay. Are the expansion, I guess, is why they're consolidating? Did the, they didn't provide a reason other than that they were cleaning up multiple lots okay. and, a, uh, and a vacant street as well as a right of way. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. okay. Thanks. Any questions for Bruce? Not, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any appearances this evening or about any items not on the agenda this evening? Hi, good evening. My name is Chuck Boss, 2335 Bell Ridge Pike. I was just curious if you could provide any kind of update on the um, plans with the Confederate Monument. I know that was partially open to as far as I know it is uh, it's still setting where it was covered up with wood and it is due to be moved when we get a crane in there big enough to do so and uh, you may know more about when that may occur um, work on City Hall they, they thought perhaps it would happen uh, in the next week or so that they would be to the point of having a crane in that they could move it put it in storage um, so that's the next step uh, we are uh, evaluating other sites um, we also have had a few um, uh, places that have had showed an interest and so we're evaluating those as well uh, once we evaluate all those we'll bring all of those to council uh, to evaluate and, and determine where uh, that next location will be but uh, um, we have not yet uh, got through all that because there's been a few more that have come into uh, into play. And was the and was the reason to wait on the crane also because of to multi, you know, it needed to be down there. Plus, it could do two different things at once. I guess it's the size of the crane. Right, know. right. So they didn't 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 currently have one on site. So they were waiting until they got one on site to okay. do other stuff all right. instead right. of making Wait, a not special just trip. specifically to get the money. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate your service. All right. Anybody else? If not, we'll go into agenda review. Okay. Staying busy today. Uh, we have no public hearings to, uh, tonight, and uh, we do have our consent agenda, which will uh, um, have the second and third readings of several things that uh, you discussed and, and voted on last time. Um, the first one is the conflicts of interest. Uh, there were no changes in our ordinance conflicts of interest, but uh, we had to pay, uh, pass it on a regular basis. So there's a second and third reading of that. Then we have the uh, items three, four, and five are all relating to an annexation out State Highway K. Uh, so we have the annexation, the, uh, the um, 
uh, zoning and then the uh, addition to that ward uh, in those items. And then uh, item number six <coughs> is a change in zoning from R3 to CBD uh, at uh, 1017 and 1019 Harmony. <coughs> item number seven is the uh, levying of the annual city revenue tax. Uh, this year there was no uh, increase in the tax. Uh, that's based on on the amount of um, value of the uh, properties, and uh, there wasn't enough change to to uh, uh, to have a uh, an increase. So uh, there was no increase. Um, number eight will is the helmet requirement that was done to align with uh, the new state statute. Uh, number nine is the methamphetamine precursor drugs for the same reason. Uh, number ten is the Good Hope Drainage Project. Uh, the uh, um, the easements for that uh, that work, and then uh, eleven is a performance guarantee for Auburn Park. Twelve is the final payment uh, for the Gordon uh, Gordonville Booster Pump Station. Are there any of those items you wish to uh, remove from the consent agenda, or uh, any items you'd like to uh, abstain from? If not, we have uh, four new ordinances tonight. We have the uh, uh, first one is uh, the appropriation of funds for debt service expenditures in fiscal year in the last fiscal year. Uh, this is an item that um, when we did bonding, we brought that to you. You you uh, you approved all the bonds and everything, and then uh, we actually did appropriate some of that money throughout the year. And so typically we do this in our cleanup. Uh, ordinance that we did a few weeks ago, just one of the ones we missed. And so this is us saying that uh, we appropriated the money that you gave approval uh, for the bonds uh, and for that purpose. So uh, it's just kind of another cleanup. Um, number 14 is the uh, special tax bill for the property at 838 South Ellis. Uh, this is for the demolition, demolition and the nuisance uh, costs for us to do a tax bill to, uh, to try to recover those costs. Uh, number 15 is a um, another item of uh, trying to make our uh, city government more um, streamlined. And so we have a dog and cat license that we've done for years, and the um, veterinarians then charge for that, and then we get it in, and we, hit, and we get a list that's handwritten, and uh, our revenue from that's about $4,000, and uh, we just don't believe it's worth the the uh, what we get from it because it's not a searchable database. It's nothing that allows us to really use the data. So we believe that our citizens don't need to be paying that, and the and we don't need the extra <laughs> extra work to uh, track it and collect it. So we would be eliminating dog and cat licensing. Um, and then 16 uh, is uh, approving the record plat of St. Jude's. Uh, this is. Um, along Silver Springs and uh, where the ring road of the mall is right there in that corner uh, for that record plat. Um, we do have three appointments tonight, uh, the Board of Adjustments, Board of Appeals, and the Golf Course Advisory Board. And, um, and then we do have a closed session tonight. Council, I'd also like to note uh, within our agenda, there are two memos. Uh, these are our memos that have been provided for your information. First one just can uh, uh, is a requirement that we, on a regular basis, and I can't remember is it every four or five years. No time. Okay, we we have to uh, conform uh, or look at our city policy and make sure that it conforms to the open meetings and records law. Uh, staff has done that; it does conform, so there's no no changes needed. Uh, but this. Uh, just make sure that everybody knows that we did do the review and then the town plaza community improvement district's annual report is also attached for use that's that's a requirement of uh of the state law uh having to do with uh, community investment districts so um that will be all and you will have a closed session tonight okay that being the case we'll transition to uh, regular session and have the roll call Bob Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Stacy Kinder is absent. Shelly Moore. Here. Dan Presson. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. Shannon Trucks. Here. 
At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Shannon. Sorry, Dan, I didn't hear you in time. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? That motion carries. We have no public hearings this evening. Anybody here uh, this evening to appear for any item listed on the agenda this evening? Any item on the agenda? If not, we'll move into the consent agenda. Eric? Bill number 20-114, an ordinance three adopting sections 2-76 to 2-83 of the City Code of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, relating to conflicts of interest, and ordinance three adopting sections 2-76 to 2-83 of the City Code of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, relating to conflicts of interest. Bill number 20-115, an ordinance annexing land into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, located at 4072 State Highway K upon the request of Mid-America Highway K, LLC, an ordinance annexing land into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, located at 4072 State Highway K upon the request of Mid-America Highway K, LLC. Bill number 20-116, an ordinance extending the boundaries of Ward 6 to include property newly annexed into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance extending the boundaries of Ward 6 to include property newly annexed into the city limits of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Bill number 20-117, an ordinance in Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by zoning newly annexed property located at 4072 State Highway KSC2 Highway Commercial District, an ordinance amending Chapter 30, the Code of Ordinances of the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, by zoning newly annexed property located at 4072 State Highway K as C2 Highway Commercial District. Number 20-118, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 1017 and 1019 Harmony Street in the state and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from R3 to CBD. An ordinance amending Chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinances of Cape Girardeau, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 1017 and 1019 Harmony Street in the state and county of Cape Girardeau, Missouri from R3 to CBD. Number 20-119, an ordinance providing for the levying of the annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June 2021, an ordinance providing for the levying of the annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June 2021. Bill number 20-120, an ordinance amending Chapter 26 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding helmet requirements, an ordinance amending Chapter 26 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding helmet requirements, Bill number 20-121, an ordinance amending Chapter 17 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding regulation of methamphetamine precursor drugs, an ordinance amending Chapter 17 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding methamphetamine precursor drugs, Bill number 20-122, an ordinance accepting various construction easements from various property owners for the Good Hope Drainage Project in the state of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. An ordinance accepting temporary construction easements from various property owners for the Good Hope Drainage Project in the state of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. You have before you the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. New ordinances. Bill number 20-123, an ordinance appropriating funds for debt service expenditures for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020 in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. Motion by Robbie, seconded by Dan. Any discussion? Would be good if we'd pay our debt service yeah. for sure <laughs> if not all those in favor signify by saying aye aye any opposed aye. then motion carries bill number 20-124 in order <laughs> authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for property located at 838 south ellis street for the demolition of a dangerous building and for the abatement of nuisances under the provisions of chapter 7 and chapter 13 of the Code of Ordinances in the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. So moved. Motion by Nate. Second. Second. Oh, okay, she seconded. Uh, Shannon. Shannon did. Uh, any questions about this one? I'm trying to read my notes and I couldn't <laughs> read my glasses on. 
Any questions? No. Any comments? Another successful nuisance abatement. That's the way I look at it. That's a good thing. We need to vote, Mayor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Bill number 20-125, an ordinance amending Chapter 6 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri regarding dog and cat licensing. So moved. Motion by Robbie. Second. Second by Dan. Any comments? I actually do. Um, I saw part of the notes in here that we were going to increase the total number of animals allowed on properties to six dogs. Is that correct? Underneath this section. Looking for something else. Sorry. For properties that have five acres or more. Yeah, there was something in there about. Yeah, I believe you're right. I just. I can't remember what the number was though. I know they. So. I used to be a nuisance statement officer. I can tell you from an enforcement standpoint. Um, four dogs was our maximum limit in the city. We're going to increase it to six. I just think that's a very bad idea. I don't know if staff actually reached out to uh, Brad Smith or Ty Metzger um, for their opinion on that matter with regarding the numbers of animals. Um, and also with the licensing, that's in place to promote care and control of a dog or a cat. So if you're required to get your license every year, you're required to go to a veterinarian every year to care for your animal. And only a licensed veterinarian can issue your rabies tag. So I, I don't agree with this change here. Um, I think there's some problems that are gonna come out of this, but I, I definitely think that um, <clears throat> we need to reach out to the police department and get their opinion from an enforcement standpoint. Um, but the total number of dogs I mean, we, we have four now in place for any property in the city, but they all have to be spayed or neutered. So if you're gonna increase that to six, we already know that Missouri is the puppy mill state. We already know that people can barely care and control their current animals that they have. So I just think that opens up the door for a lot of problems in Cape. I know one of the other issues with this is it's really not been enforced. Uh, there are lots of people that, that don't give licenses for their animals and and it's really a tough thing to enforce. That has a lot to do with this too. Point of information, is this license currently is just a one-time deal? It's not an annual. No, it's annual. Annual. It's annual. Anytime you go yeah. to the vet you're, and for vaccination, I believe you're charged and given your tag. Right. We have to ask tag. for it, but. You yeah. have to ask for yeah. it. Yeah. It's a nominal yeah. amount. It's not, the license is a. Uh, but have we ever different? increased the fees since we've had the licensing? I mean, you say that it's four thousand dollars worth of revenue have we ever increased the total fees for the dog and cat licensing i mean i think four thousand dollars is e easy revenue for the city and just to get rid of it be pointless yes we did increase the fees and frankly shannon i don't remember when it was it's been quite a long time ago though and and from an enforcement standpoint the only reason why people get notices or or come to customer service or have problems with their licensing is because an animal control officer or somebody from the department was called for either a dog at large or a problem and they were given a notice or a warning to get their dog license. Um, I'm not sure in our notes here about wasted time from staff to just write someone a receipt for their license, how that's a waste of our personnel dollars or, or their time. I, I, I just think that this is not a good idea to remove this basically revenue that doesn't take anything but just signing someone's receipt and now we've got actually it's a vet staff that writes you right. Right. right you a but you can also come into city hall and get it or you know customer service and get your tag too if you provide your proof of your oh, okay well you can so, usually you get it at the vet though i mean I, we've always done that right well um all good points um certainly um be glad to have uh, our staff come in and talk about what you know what process they went through and who they checked with i think it's certainly great questions um unfortunately molly's not here tonight to to uh, uh talk about that but uh we'll be glad to to do that and um you can either 
uh, proceed or table it, or if you'd like to proceed with first reading, then uh, we can do it prior to second and third reading, or e either one is absolutely fine. I think you bring up, like I said, I think you bring up some good questions that unfortunately I don't have the answer to tonight. I don't know, Wes, if you had anything to add. Uh, no, I was not involved in the ordinance, so I don't have anything to add on that. I, I would recommend that we table it and get further input from the department because they're the ones that are enforcing this number of animals. Etc. So, I mean, unless we just magically annex like multiple five-acre properties, you know, in the can in the county and become city, and these people have five dogs, I'm not sure where this number has jumped from four to six from, or what the push is. So, and I'm not sure. Well, I would be anxious to to hear. I, I get what you're saying. I, I was supportive of staff because I think some of um, sometimes we look at some of the things we do as a city that we that we've passed ordinances that that are difficult a to enforce b it it can be cumbersome to customer service and 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 pieces like that which is why i, I support it um i tend to agree on the four to six dog jump um but took it as staff having done their work that i thought that that must have not been an issue whenever so i would be i would be interested to hear what how we got to, to the repeal. And, and quite frankly, even if we did do away with the customer service aspect, I could see an amendment to, to uh, keeping the, the four in place. I, I'm, I'm still not finding the, the four. The well, the it says, it, all it says is when it says repeal, if you're looking at. It was in the, and I can't get mine to come up. And, and, that's, and I, that was kind of hard because if you look at the staff, um, I remember there being something about going. You have to, to go into the the attachment itself. I'm sorry. Okay. iPads. It doesn't the, yeah, my, the mine's not coming up. It doesn't ever. You have to go over to the top where it says attachment. You can't do the bottom. No, it only it, pulls up the front page yeah, it's on not an iPad. Well, it doesn't when, when you say when you look at the ordinance, the way it was drafted, it says an ordinance <clears> in chapter six of the code, and then you scroll down. It says is hereby repealed in its entirety, and then if you look at it, it's section uh, section six thirty six. It says no part or no person shall at any time keep, harbor, or allow to remain at one residential location within the city two dogs, and then unless they have been spayed or neutered, all of such animals are spayed or neutered. And then it says, but no more than four of the combined allowed total. So I guess the question would be is that. If that's if you're if you're eliminating all of chapter six its entirety, is that in fact because there's six and then there's six dash two or six dash two be part of I, six? I, mean, I can help you a little bit on this. I was not involved in the uh, in the desire to do this. They just sent to me what what they had uh, come up with, but there is not a an increase that I see in the limitation on the number of dogs and cats. The numbers of the sections that are affected here. Yeah, my dry fingers. Because I didn't, I wasn't aware either. So it was it's under the right. notes, and so it was. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was for an increase of the four total spayed or neutered dogs to six on, eight on parcels a five, of five acres, acres or, more. or more. But there aren't that many parcels of five acres well, in the city. Well, that's true. That's but you know, well, we're, but, we're expanding, so. I mean, um, the parcels of five acres or more, you're looking at 6-36C. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it is six now and it is it would be six then. It's still six. Oh, okay. so, so it still does not change. Six. It's right. uh, so above, look changed. at the language above where it says is hereby repealed and then you go down. All that did in the change from 6-36 was to eliminate uh, the section about the limitation doesn't apply if a person has a license, it just removed that exception for a person. Well, there is a. a license. Oh, okay. Well, we that, have, that, we that, have that. a motion. We have a motion to table. Go here, a second. Second. Second, my Nate. Uh, I don't have an issue with tabling it, just simply because of. Uh, you know, we're, we're just not getting some answers and we maybe need to look into it just a little more 
So that's not a big deal. I mean, it wouldn't make any difference whether we had the first reading, we do it before the second, third, but this way we'll just table it and get more information and go from there. Yep. It's not a not a big deal to, to wait to do that anyway. Any further discussion on the motion to table? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That bill is tabled. Bill number 20-126, an ordinance approving a record plat of St. Jude Second Subdivision. So moved. Motion Second. by Robbie. Second by Nate. Yes, sir. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We have uh, three sets of appointments this evening. Uh, I'll go through Board of Adjustment ballot first. Uh, those three were, these are alternates to the Board of Adjustment. And that board hears and decides exceptions to zoning requirements for setbacks, for size, and stuff like that. Uh, and these are alternates, uh, which will fill in in case somebody's not there. And these are Raymond Boos, Edward Hart, and David Hinton. Make a motion to accept. I have a motion by Robbie to accept. Second. Second by Nate. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. The uh, second is the Board of Appeals. And this, uh, this board decides on appeals for building code issues. Uh, and this was Nicole Annis. Okay. Motion to accept. Motion to accept from Nate. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Second by Hello. Shannon. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. The last is the golf course advisory board ballot. Uh, there were several applicants, and the two were Joshua Schultz, who's the JC representative, and Gary Wren. Okay, move to accept. Move by Robbie. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Shelley. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Uh, other business, uh, I want to remind you our uh, next meeting is Tuesday, September 8th, because Monday is on Labor Day. Uh, so we'll meet on Tuesday, September 8th. So I'll make sure that's on your calendar. Shelly has something. Shelly? I just want to say uh, okay. thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Uh, Greaser, I came to the meeting last week, okay. and uh, Mr. Greaser, he got up and he, I mean, he, he apologized. And the other gentleman, I can't remember his name. Mr. Welch. Well, okay, he too. And um, I thought that was, uh, I know it might have been hard for him to do it, but it was one of the best things that they could have done because uh, the community shouldn't have to be tossed to and fro by needless words, you know. And he apologized, and I, I just wanted to say, I thank him for that. I know he's not here, but I still want everybody to know that I thank him for taking the opportunity and the time and understanding that we all make mistakes. And uh, he covered it. He let everybody know that he did, and he was sorry. So, okay, that's it. I don't want to thank say you. That. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to closed session. Discuss issues regarding legal actions, litigation, confidential communication with legal counsel, property acquisition, and personnel matters pursuant to revised section Missouri 610-02112 and 3. So moved. Second. We are adjourned to closed session. Congratulations. Thank you. Very happy for you guys. Thanks. It's been a while.
Another couple of weeks. I bet it has. Get some sleep. Yeah, I heard that comment. I thought, they can do anything to change something. I've heard it. Now, at least not that anybody told me. 